Hey, there's no shame in struggling with triplet fills. We've all been there. Today I'll show you some simple things to practice to smoothen out your triplets, and before you know it, you'll be nailing triplet fills around the kit. Hey everybody, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I believe the number one reason that we struggle with triplets in our drumming today is just because we don't hear those kinds of rhythms in everyday pop music that's on the radio and on popular Spotify playlists and whatnot these days. And most of what we play is straight eights. Uh, if you're new to music or new to drums, you don't really know what I'm talking about. Something that's triplet based or loose or swung would feel like. Versus something straight eighths or straight sixteenths might be. Something kind of like that, where it's much more angular, much more rigid. And so something that is straight eighths or straight sixteenths, it almost, it looks like a square. It feels like a square. And something that's triplet or swung is more round and it kind of bounces along. That's always how I visualized it, how I felt it. Now there are exceptions in popular music these days because you do have like Bruno Mars doing loose, funky hip hop stuff that's kind of reminiscent of a lot of 70s funk stuff also. And then you've got a lot of 80s music that's coming back. And so there are some kind of weird shuffle patterns that are starting to show up more commonly than in the past like 10 or 15 or 20 years. But for the most part, most of what we play is straight eighths. And if we decide, okay, I want to play a big triplet fill in the middle of the straight eighth groove, a lot of times it's awkward and not very comfortable. But that's specifically the context I want to talk about today because most songs we're playing are straight eighths if we're playing a rock groove. But sometimes in a rock ballad, there's an epic moment where you just need to do a big triplet fill, and that can be really hard to do well. And so that's exactly what we're focusing on today. And also to start answering the question in the title, the main reason why our triplet fills sound bad is because they rush. And if you rush a triplet fill, it completely destroys the big, huge epicness of it, especially at slower tempos. You really have to make sure that they've got their space because if you've been playing something that's eighths or sixteenths and you go into triplets, it's gonna feel slow. And if you let it rush, it just doesn't work. So I'd like to share with you an exercise today that I've used a bunch. It's super simple, nothing brilliant or genius about it. I'm sure a bunch of other drummers have played exercises like this. I've got it notated nicely in a PDF. You can go check that out in the description below to follow along right now, or you can just go grab it after the video, but it's free, go grab it. Basically all we're gonna do throughout the exercise is alternate between eighths, eighth note triplets, sixteenths, back to the eighth note triplets, back to the eighths, and so on, just cycling back and forth through them so that you get that practice feeling out the different subdivisions within the same tempo. You can experiment with it, it's a flexible exercise and there's a lot of things you can do with it. And if you practice that regularly, make that a part of your practice session, you will get a lot better at feeling those changes between different subdivisions and it will make it a lot easier going into triplets in the midst of a straight groove or even going into something straight in the midst of a triplet groove. That's kind of the alternate take that we're not really focusing as much on today, but this will help you with that too. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to play a straight groove. Again, we're pretty much playing everything at 70 beats a minute here for consistency. It's a good tempo for practicing this. And I'm just going to go into a big triplet thing on the snare, really simple. But what I'm going to do is lay it back a little bit. So it's almost like, in my mind, I like to visualize these things, you know, talking about the square versus the circle. It's kind of like pulling back a slingshot as you're slowing down that triplet fill, pulling back the slingshot and then launching it when you go into the chorus. Because then you've got room to actually pick things up a little bit and push things a little bit if you can lay back the fill. That's a really cool trick that works in certain songs. It's not for every song. But if there's a big moment, if you can lay back the fill rather than push the fill, then it gives you the ability to push the, the groove once you get into the chorus or wherever you're going next.
So every one of those triplet fills were laid back to a degree. That last one actually laid back even more going into the quiet groove. So what you can do is take your metronome, set it to 70 beats a minute, and line it up with what I just did. I think what's cool about it is that you'll find that if you listen to the example I just played without any metronome or anything, you'll find that it just it feels kind of cool. You don't really notice that it's slowing down and then speeding back up. But then when you line the metronome up, you'll hear that, oh, I'm actually slowing down a little bit there. And then there was one, one of them that um, it was really cool speeding it back up, going into the groove, because I was able to add a lot of energy to it. And so when you slow it down, so it gives you the space to really work with it and do really cool stuff. And that's while playing to a click. And I love that kind of flexibility, being able to lay something back so then you can push something forward. That really brings the triplet fill to its maximum potential. So of course there are a lot of songs out there that have big epic triplet fills, but there's a specific song that first inspired me to start practicing this a few years ago, and it's called Come Clean by the singer-songwriter Audrey Asad. Uh, look it up, I don't remember the name of the album, but if you search that on Spotify, uh, you'll find it, and the song, I think it's, it's like 71, maybe 72 beats a minute. It's right around this range. Low 70s, it might be 70 beats a minute. So it's that big kind of simple ballad. It's a simple song, straightforward. And there's this moment going into a chorus near the end where there's just this big... And going into that crash, it lays back just a little bit. The drummer who played on it does a great job of just laying it back, leaning back a little bit, and then launching. And so when I first heard that, I thought, whoa. Something made that interesting. I had to go back and line up the metronome with it and hear what really happened. And I just pictured the slingshot thing. And I thought, that's so cool. I got to practice doing that. So go check that out and see if you can find other songs that have examples like that. Because there are tons of other songs that have triplets in them that maybe weren't recorded to a click. And maybe they lean back even further. So there's your challenge for the week. If you want to dig more into this, you've got the resources to now get better at your triplets and get better at going back and forth with the exercise I gave you. And now you can take that, run with it, go listen to some songs, check out Come Clean specifically, and practice doing this. It's a lot of fun. It can really make a triplet film musical. Hey, I hope this video helped you out and provided you with something valuable to incorporate into your practicing and your playing and your gigging. If that's the case, of course, I hope you'll share the video and I really hope you'll subscribe and become a fellow non-glamorous drummer. Thanks guys, and I'll see you on the next video.